Hi all, welcome to the Makehaven Woodshop. This is going to be an orientation video to get you familiar with how the woodshop works and what some of the expectations are. Also, we're going to cover some of the small things that aren't covered in the tool-specific badging videos. So first of all, going in, eye protection is required. There are dangerous things in both the wood and metal shops that can come at you even when you're not working on a power tool. So eyeglasses are just always required. You're welcome to bring your own. They also live right here. So you can grab any kind of eyeglasses. There are kinds that go over other glasses. With masks on, they can fog up. So there are a few things you can do about that. One, to clean them, we have isopropyl alcohol. You can spray on and that'll disinfect them. Uh, what I tend to do is when I put the glasses on, I just put them a little bit forwards on the bridge of my nose. That helps the hot air just escape a little better. Just pinch the bridge in your mask and, and that should take care of it. We also have rain -X, which you can put on the lenses and that will help them stop fogging up. Uh, with that, we are now gonna enter just to cover the other very basic rules. You wanna make sure you don't have loose items that could get caught in a machine. Make sure hair is tied back, for example, no ties dangling, earbuds dangling, stuff like that. And you absolutely cannot be intoxicated. You can't bring alcohol in and you can't have had um, excessive alcohol to drink before you go in. So in the wood shop, uh, we covered eyeglasses. Here is other personal protective equipment, uh, specifically hearing protection. That's at your own discretion if you feel that other people or yourself are making noises that are, are too loud, then put on hearing protection, hair ties, gloves. Gloves are not recommended for using power tools. They're norm normally uh, used when you're carrying sharp or splintery wood or something like that. Fire extinguisher, and there's an air quality meter right up here that is now glowing blue. This is another eyewash station. We do have N95 masks available in the store. We will visit the store shortly so you can see what's available there. Then we're just gonna do a, a quick loop around. But before we do that, I just wanna cover the other basic safety things. It's really important, especially when it's noisy in the shop, to not surprise people. Someone can be really focused on a tool. If they don't hear you coming and you tap them on the shoulder, they could be surprised and get hurt. So it's important to approach people in such a way so that they can see you. So if I was working here, it'd be appropriate to approach me from the front and give me a wave instead of tapping me on the back or grabbing my shoulder or something like that. Another safety consideration is the buddy rule. So there are some buddy tools, table saw, chop saw for quick examples. And those require that there is someone who can regularly see what you're doing. If they're in the main room, they need to know that they're your buddy so they don't wander off to the bathroom when they're the only person in there. Uh, if they're in here, then you know same goes just to make sure that you're on the same page. And their only responsibility is to make sure that if you get hurt, they can respond by calling 911, getting you help. They can be a guest of yours, they can be a member, they don't need to be badged on any of the tools, they just need to be there in case, in case you do get hurt. So we'll now look at air quality briefly. We're gonna go down to this end. There are air filters up on the ceiling. These are largely for uh, dust removal, but they also work for other airborne, airborne particulates. There's a remote control right up on the wall here. And this has an on off button. You just point it at the front of each machine. And you can also select the speed to set it on high. And if you click time, that will start a timer so that it runs just you know, for two, four, six hours, depending on how you set it. And then right now we have an exhaust fan and right now it's just set to run continuously. So you don't need to worry about that. It's just continuously venting the air out of the space. You may have noticed that the windows in the main space are open a crack and that's to help move air through the space. For that reason, it may be chilly in here, so feel free to put on an extra layer. So some of the tools have a card access system and you'll practice this when you get badged on a tool, but we're just gonna point this out now. You're gonna scan your card on the black boxes with the Wi-Fi symbol. So for an example of this, we have this box this is for currently, though this may change, the panel saw planer and lathe. And you would take your member card, scan it, and then you push the middle green button. And that activates this light. Um, and, and that therefore activates the tool once you're badged on it. Press the red button to turn it off. It will also time itself off if you don't use it for very long. 
something that regularly trips people up is the e-stop may be pressed. Let's say I had my hands deep in there and I really didn't want the tool turning on, I might push the e-stop and that locks the tool off. However, if someone now tries to turn the tool on, it doesn't turn on. So that you might think it's broken, it's not. You just twist this in the direction of the arrows and now the tool will activate when you scan it. So that's how those control boxes work. Something else we're gonna look at is a lot of these tools have automatic dust collection. Some are tied into the main system, others have their own dust collectors. In this case, a shop vac. So this shop vac, the switch is turned to on because the power cord is plugged into this little control box. This gives power to the shop vac when the tool is activated. Occasionally, the system will undergo a reboot and then this won't work. And what you just need to do is unplug it and plug it back in and now it will work just fine. So occasionally, if a shop vac isn't turning on automatically, that's all you need to do and it'll be fine. You don't need to unplug and push any buttons. That should take care of it. For the tools that are connected to the uh, big dust collector, we have these blast gates. So for these, you just unlock this thumb screw on this side, open when you're using the tool, and close when you're done using the tool. If I was using the planer, I would make sure to turn all the other dust gates to close so all of the suction was going specifically to the planer. There are one for the table saw, one for the planer, one for the jointer, and a floor sweep. So those are the ones to, to check when you are using any of those tools. The dust collector is going to stay on for about 10 minutes after you initiate any of these tools that are connected to it. And that's just so it isn't turning on and off, on and off, every time you turn the tool on and off. Um, so it'll help the dust collector last longer. Now we're gonna look at the dust collector briefly. Sometimes what'll happen is someone wants the dust collector to turn off and they will push this e-stop on it. And similarly to the tool control boxes, it will now not turn on when the tools turn on. And that can be frustrating. You may not notice, but if you do notice, it's important then to twist this button. So now the dust collector can turn on. And if you do, for some reason, need to turn this off manually, just make sure to twist it so it undoes the e-stop. And that'll save other people frustration. If any tool is not working and you don't know why, um, we have out of order signs here. We just ask that you take one of these signs and write on it with a, with a marker what the problem is and also post that to Slack so that a facilitator or staff person can take care of that. You may have noticed that at this end of the room we have some things hanging from the ceiling. These are electricity and compressed air. So for all of these things, when you pull them down, you can let go when it's clicking. So hopefully you heard that click and that's when, that's when it'll stay in that position. If you wanna let it go back up, you pull and then when it's not clicking is when you can release it. Same goes for the compressed air. The compressed air is powered by a big compressor in one of our back rooms and it provides air that can be good for blowing dust off things as well as powering nail guns and other tools. Uh, the way that these work is you pull the collar back push the tool in, and then let go. So I'm gonna demonstrate with this one, because it has a tool in it. So to remove the tool, I'm gonna to push on, pull this collar back, and then let go. Here the collar is automatically retracted, but I'm still gonna pull back, push it in, and let go, and now the tool is on there. We have a a whiteboard here where you can write things that need fixing or replacing or things that you want. So there's some markers and feel free to, if you notice something that could be improved, feel free to write it up there. Or if you're, there's some tool that you'd really like, feel free to write it on there, as well as adding it to the wish list at makehaven.org slash wishes. Now we're gonna go over the location of some generically useful things in the wood shop. One that we're gonna start with is looking at paste wax. So this wax is uh, in these yellow tins, and this can be applied to most any metal tool. So for example, if you're using a hand plane or a jointer, the table saw, and the wood isn't sliding really smoothly, you can take some paste wax and apply it to a cloth or paper towel and rub it in to that metal surface, and then take a clean one, a clean paper towel, and wipe it off. And that will help the wood glide really smoothly. So sometimes, the planer, for example, will be struggling to get wood through, and that's just because the wood is sticking to the bed. So using this paste wax can be useful on hand chisels, on, on any number of tools, and that also helps mitigate rusting. 
So this is a, a useful tool to keep in mind. You can even put paste racks on screws to help screws go more easily into wood. Here are drill bits. Here are some hand tools. This is where the fine woodworking tools live. And these are some chemicals. These are the MSDSs or material safety data sheets for these chemicals. We do supply wood glue for use. So if you're using an enormous amount, you should probably get your own, but we do try to keep some stocked here. These are the big gallon jugs and these refill the smaller containers. So if it seems like one of these is getting low, just refill it from a bigger jug and you should be good to go. No need to throw these out. There are some other products there that people have left. Feel free to take and leave other wood filler and such products as you see fit. If you notice that the big jugs of wood glue are running out, we have a clipboard by the entrance of the wood shop and uh, right above the 48 hour table. And on there, you can write supplies that we are running out of. Those are things that make even supplies. We don't, for example, supply wood filler. So you don't need to write that because that's not something that make haven supplies. Over here are measuring tools of all varieties. They should be outlined. So it's easy to find where they should go and make sure that everyone gets put back properly. Over here are tape measures uh, or measuring tapes and as well as pneumatic tools. Any tool that has this red color scheme is a Milwaukee tool that uses these batteries, some pencils, as well as driver bits. So these go in drills to put in screws and fasteners. This is an assortment of clamps. As with everything else, it is critically important to make sure that you put things back where you find them when you're done. And these are fasteners. They're organized just by the type of fastener. So we have screws, which have threads and a pointy tip for driving themselves into wood. We have nails, which are pointy, but don't have threads. These are put in with a hammer. And then we have nuts and bolts. And these go through holes that have already been made and they have nuts that go on the end of them. So these are the generic fasteners that we have. We don't supply them. This is just what people have left over. And it's worth noting that at some point they may live in a spot in the back, which we'll show you. So now I'm going to point out some things available in the back storage room that might be useful for you in the wood shop. This is our growing store. So this is where you can find sandpaper for the belt sanders, for the drum sander. We have just sheets of sandpaper as well as sandpaper for the orbital, the random orbital sanders. There are masks and other blades and carbide bits and, and such things. So that could be useful to you. Um, you can pay for these things either here with the cash in an envelope or at makehaven.org slash store. We also have lots of sandpaper available for free in these cabinets. Um, these don't fit any of our tools, but it's available for you to use just as hand sandpaper. This is a wood cart, so you can use this to help transport wood from your car or around the space if there are big pieces that are heavy. And here we have some wood available for sale. So it is priced right on the end. I also wrote the lengths of the pieces of wood on the end so you know how long they are. This is free hardware. So this is hardware that's been donated to the space. So you're welcome to go through here. And if you see anything valuable uh, or useful to your project, feel free to take it. The free hardware here is limited to just the shelves that are labeled as free hardware. Um, it does not include all of the Make Haven and member storage around it. And this is the wood scrap area in the back area of Make Haven. It is organized by size and shape. So the shorter pieces are in the front and the skinnier pieces are towards the left. As they get wider to the right and taller, they go towards the back. Uh, feel free to leave material here and take material from here. We ask though that you not just take any piece and put it here because you feel bad about throwing it out. You should only put pieces here if they are actually valuable. This is some plywood available for sale. The prices are listed on the sides. We currently have a wide selection here, uh, but as time goes on, there may be different types of wood available for purchase here for use by Make Haven members. Another tool available for use here is the woodworking benches. Uh, we have a number of different types of benches uh, for different purposes. This plastic one, for example, is good for glue ups because the glue can peel off of it. We also have some that are more focused towards work holding. So this is a traditional hand woodworking bench, um, but three of our benches have holes in them. 
And these holes are for dogs. So these are woodworking dogs that go in these holes. And so for example, you could put one here and then you could clamp between a vise and a dog. Um, there are also a number of accessories over here. So in addition to more bench dogs, we have these clamps. And so the way that these work is you put your material in, you hammer down here, and then when you want to release it, you hit the back and it comes up. And so this is a really useful tool for holding your work, for clamping, uh, and making sure that it stays, place, stays in place when you are trying to work on your wood. These are also vices. So these vices can clamp wood. When you pinch here, this lets you move them in and out easily. So now we're gonna talk about cleaning. Uh, keeping the shop clean is incredibly important. It is important for safety. If people are tripping over things and can't find things, that's frustrating and dangerous. And we don't have a cleaning crew. So it is your responsibility not just to clean up for yourself, but to do a little more and leave the shop cleaner than you found it. Everyone makes more of a mess than you think. When you're using a saw, you make a little pile of sawdust here, but it also floats around and lands on everything else. And so if everyone only cleaned up their own mess, we would still end up with a messy shop. So it's important to make sure that you are going above and beyond, and you can expect to spend about 10 minutes at least cleaning up after any projects. You should plan on that and not feel like you're in a rush at the end and just trying to get out. Uh, cleaning is part of making and it's not an optional step. So we're gonna start with some of the cleaning supplies here. This is a normal push broom. You can make a pile of, of wood scraps and chips and sweep them up with one of these hand brooms into a dustpan and put into the trash. We also have a number of shop vacs, and those are valuable because uh, they don't blow the dust up into the air like the brooms do. So we're gonna look at how those work. There are also shop vacs around the space that are permanently attached to tools. So these are not available for use as general shop vacs. They only turn on when the tool is on. So you should look for the shop vacs that have handles on them that can easily roll around the space. So we have shop vacs located all around the shop and you're welcome to plug them in wherever is useful to you. They have hoses as well as these accessories. Um, there are more accessories up on the wall. Here are some attachments for the vacuums, including arms as well as uh, pieces to go on the end to sweep up around other places. So for these shop vacs, uh, once they're plugged in, you just flip the on switch and go around and clean up. So most of these tools have automatic dust collection, but that just gets 50% of the dust. So you need to make sure to use the shop vac to clean up all the nooks and crannies under the machine, behind the machine, that isn't being collected by the dust collection. And that's very important to clean up even over here because when I use the panel saw, it's putting dust over here. So you need to make sure to clean in a big wide radius all the way around the tool. You might just use the pointy end to get in here and then add this when you want to get the floor. At some point, the shop vac gets full and then you need to empty it out and clean the filter. So we'll show you how to do that. So first, we open the handles, take this off, and this one's pretty empty doesn't change anything. So we would undo the hose and take this bucket and then just dump it into any of the trash bins that are located around the space. So that's how you empty the big bin. You can also remove the handle if that makes it easier for you. In terms of the filter, what we're gonna do is use one of the dust extractors to clean it. This is a dust extractor. There are a few of them located around the space and they have a cool few features. So. Uh, one of them is that they use filter bags. And what that means is that we can fill that bag with dust from this filter and then just empty the bag and we aren't continuously just filling up these filters. So now we can go over here. There are actually a few cool features on this. So one is that it can be turned on automatically when you are using a tool. So let's say I was using this for a sander. I could plug the sander right in the front of this dust extractor and turn it to the tool mode. And now this will turn on automatically whenever I turn the sander on. So it's important when you're sanding to make sure you have good dust collection and this can help you do that. The other is when I turn this tool on, it makes that thumping sound and that thumping sound is it cleaning its own filter. So now we're gonna take this and just clean off this filter. And now this will get great dust collection again. 
So we can reassemble this by putting this right back on. And we're gonna tuck this back away here. And now the shop vac is good to go. So now that begs the question of how do we empty these dust extractors? So we'll go over that. Similarly, you just open the sides and that exposes the inside. So here we have this filter bag. There's a note saying this bag is not disposable and it has a, it has a zipper right on the bottom. So you would take this, you can remove it, and then you go over, undo the zipper and dump that right out into the trash bin and you put this bag right back in there so you can keep using it. And that is how we take care of that dust. Put you back in there. And clamp those back down. And then we're gonna put this away right over by the dust collector, which we will talk about next. So this is the dust collector where a lot of the dust collects. It is similar though to the dust collector used for the drum sander as well as for the big Gerber CNC. So the same ideas apply here. When you think it's getting full, because you can see in here that it's getting full, or sometimes you can notice that this dust bag is collecting some chips in it, which is a good indicator that it's getting full. Then what you can do is just lift these handles and pull this out. And this is a little premature, but that's okay. We're just gonna empty it anyways, so you can see the process. So we lift this metal grate out, and this is just to hold the bag in place. And sometimes if this little bag had gotten full as well, we could empty that. So we'll show how to do that. You just undo this strap. Take this off and dump this in here. And then pull this right out. And you feel free to ask someone else for help because this can be heavy. So we'll throw this out in a minute. And then to put the new bag in, we're just gonna get a bag from here. this cage back in. And then we just put this over the sides and can roll this right back underneath. Clamp down, clamp down, making sure it's centered. And then last, we're gonna reattach this bag Tighten down on the strap and that bag is reattached. Uh, before we take this out, uh, I'm just gonna point out the other vacuums around the space because some of them have cyclones attached. So the way these work is the shop vac is pulling air over a cyclone that helps to collect most of the dust. So you may also need to empty these, which you do in a similar way, just undoing those and putting the replacement bag in. Those bags also live next to the dust collector. Also connected to the dust collector system is the floor sweep. So if you have a big pile of shavings, perhaps from the jointer, you can open this blast gate and push the green button on the dust collector and just sweep the shavings right into here and they'll get sucked up right into the dust collector. Just make sure to close it when you're done. And then when you turn off the dust collector, just twist the stop instead of pushing the e-stop so that it isn't locked closed. Also, when you're throwing scraps out into the trash bins, just make sure that the scraps are a reasonable size so that they fit in the bin. If they're sticking way out, then it's not gonna fit easily in the dumpster and that's a pain. So make sure to cut scraps down or break them down so they fit nicely into the trash bin. So now we're just gonna bring this trash out to the dumpster so you know where that lives. So I'm just gonna put this in here to make it easier to carry. And we're gonna 
roll out to the back courtyard. This is where the back door key lives. For now, what you do is use this to scan into the back door in the courtyard, and this is the key to the dumpster, so we'll take this out with us. So this is currently Make Haven's dumpster, though in the future we may be using the big green dumpster in that uh, fenced off area. So we're just going to use the key, open it, and then make sure to lock it up so that other people don't fill our dumpster up with their trash because then we have nowhere to put our trash. And that's where that goes. And I just want to reinforce that cleaning up is really, really important. Uh, it's frustrating for other people to clean up after you and it's frustrating when you feel like other people aren't doing their best, uh, the cleanup that they can do. So I would encourage you, if you see someone who it doesn't look like they're doing a thorough job cleaning up, just kindly you know, introduce yourself, maybe compliment them on the project that they're working on, and ask if they'd be interested in helping you clean up and take out the trash. Uh, it doesn't need to be accusatory. Some people, you, know, just, you don't notice when you make little bits of mess, and they, you know, a piece falls off the back of the bandsaw, and you, just, you don't see the little bits and pieces. And so by kindly asking someone, um, I'm, they're often more than happy to help so that the mess doesn't fall into someone else to take care of. If it does seem like a problem and someone is chronically not cleaning up, then feel free to just mention it to a staff person. Thanks so much for watching and have a great time making stuff in the woodshop.